Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to today's topic. We are here in beautiful Okutama, which is two hours to the west of Tokyo by train, 55 kilometer. And I chose this beautiful occasion to give you a quick introduction. Into pack rafting. Today you will learn what different kind of pack rafts exist, also what different kind of pedals exist and which one is suitable for which use case. I will also talk about certain accessories like thigh straps, which gives you more control and stability over your pack raft. And I will also talk about variations of pack rafts. For example, pack rafts with self bailing floors or a cargo, which we can see here, where you can place all your stuff inside to keep it dry on multi-day trips. So either you recently bought a pack raft or you are in a decision and purchasing process, you will have a much better understanding after this video what is suitable for your needs. So let's jump right into it. The modern pack rafting industry is quite young. It was 20 years ago when a company called Alpaca started to produce these kind of modern pack rafts. And from 2002 till 2014, this brand, the brand Alpaca, was standing almost synonymously for the word Packraft. From 2014 onwards, other companies started to produce these kind of Packrafts. And now you can choose from more than 30 brands. You have mainly two types of Packrafts. You have the basic utility Packrafts, which are more simple in its shape. So it's more a rectangle, bathtub kind of shape and you have high performance whitewater pack rafts which is rather what we can see here with a streamlined body called hull where the front the bow is different to the back the stern this one here is called MRS so the brand is MRS and the model is micro raft you can buy it in different sizes from XS to XL but only the L version, which is this one here, and the XL version allows you to configure it optionally with the cargo or internal storage system, ISS. The cargo is closed with this waterproof zipper and the pack raft comes with two 70 liter tri bags where you can place your stuff inside, like your tent, sleeping bag, for example, on one side, camera equipment, and on the other side, food, water, and so on. So the weight distribution should be relatively equal. And then you can place each of these dry bags inside the tubes. But be careful, never open the zipper while the pack raft is inflated. So always first deflate it, here and once the air is out you can open the zipper and fill in the cargo another characteristic of a basic utility pack raft is that the cockpit is completely open so it's easy to enter and exit so what i like about this pack raft is that it comes with the spray deck i can remove the spray deck completely to have it open as well but i also can keep it closed like that so it prevents water from coming in into the cockpit spray skirt is sealing off your cockpit better so a spray skirt is for really white water rafting models that's why i said i call this rather a hybrid but nevertheless it keeps water out it's very easy to remove so if there is no prediction of rain so we can see here it's connected with a zipper on this side and here with Velcro. So in case you capsize on a white water rafting, you can easily open it and exit it. So yeah, if there's no prediction of rain and I go to a calm lake, I can keep the spray deck at home, which saves me weight and space. Another characteristic between the two type of pack raft is the weight. So basic utility pack rafts are lighter because the material is not as durable as for white 
white water pack rafts. They are starting at one kilo, so 2.2 pounds, but are mainly around two kilo, so 4.4 pounds. High performance white water pack rafts are double the weight. So rather four kilo or 8.8 .8 pounds. This one here is 3.3 kilo. So as we can see again, hybrid in the middle or 7.3 pounds. This means the pack raft itself, the seat and the backrest. The seat has several benefits. The first benefit is you are sitting higher so you can see easily over the bow. Second benefit is because your butt is lifted up, is higher than your feet, it's more comfortable to sit. Third, if you have water in the cockpit on the floor, you are not sitting in the water. And fourth, due to the fact that you sit higher, you have more control over your pack raft. So you can do high angle power strokes, which is especially needed for white water rafting, compared to lower angle strokes, for example, on a calm lake. Also your core muscles can have much more impact due to the fact that you are sitting higher. The back rest connects you same like the seat between the body and the pack raft. And of course, it's also more comfortable. So you want to have a long spine, a straight up position when you are sitting in a pack raft. I will do another video where I explain all that. So if you like this video, please give it a like and consider to subscribe. For now, the backrest keeps you more comfortable. And what we also can see here is a foot brace. So you can buy a dedicated foot brace or what I did is I bought a simple tri bag where I can place some snacks, uh, small camera, everything I need for the day. I can fix it here with these Velcro bands. If I capsize, it stays inside. And when I sit inside, I can push my feet against this foot brace. What we also can see here are thigh straps. Thigh straps are very important because they connect your legs to the pack raft. And you use your hips to control a pack raft. And because your legs are connected to the pack raft, you have a lot more stability and control. These thigh straps are either included when you buy your pack raft or like in my case, I had to buy them additionally. And the easiest way how to connect them is you, you go the opposite way in into one of these holes. You move it in and then down. That's what I figured is the easiest way. Then you have here a point to fix it and up here a point to fix it and that's it so again if you are on a calm lake you can keep you can keep them at home you don't need to take them with you but if you have a river with class three four or even five rapids you definitely want to have these thigh straps very helpful let's talk about costs at the end the same factors are determining the cost like for other products so first of all, it's the weight and the quality of the material. Second, it's the complexity of the design. Third, with the complexity of the design, you have a more complicated, but also better often manufacturing process. And fourth, the brand itself. So is it a brand from US, Canada, China, Czech Republic? All these factors are determining the costs of your pack raft. You have a range between $400 and $1,600. So 400 euro to 1,600 euro. And this pack raft here is in the mid range. So around $1,000. So before I talk about the pedals, let's have a quick summary. So we have basic utility pack rafts, rather light, the material less durable, cockpit is open, easy to enter and exit. The form itself is rather mm -hmm. a bathtub rectangle kind of shape. And they are suitable for calm lakes or also calm rivers like this, where we have, let's say, rapid one. Um, you still can do it with a basic utility pack raft. They are perfect for fishing hunting trips. So you go in, you have your 
fishing equipment. You can place your dog with you. You can put your bicycle. So they have a lot of options what you can do with it, but you can't use them for whitewater rafting. And that's the second category. So we have whitewater pack rafts, which are heavier, around four kilo, as I mentioned, eight to eight pounds, streamlined asymmetrical body. They are more durable, right? Which is important. If you go down the river, you face rocks, as we can see here, stones, uh, branches on the side of the river. So it's more easy to puncture your pack raft. Whitewater pack rafts, are stronger and as I also mentioned you can buy them with a self bailing floor perforated floor where you have holes in the floor that water can drain through the floor but the disadvantage is that self bailing floors are often open means the pack raft is open, so you can't close them. That's why I decided against a self bailing floor. Also, some people feel that due to the water being continuously inside the cockpit, a self bailing floor feels more sluggish and has more drag due to the perforated floor. That's the summary, what we can say between the two different type of pack rafts. Then let's quickly talk about pedals. This one here is a sea kayak pedal. Why? Because it's longer. That's the first criteria. Sea kayak pedals are longer than river kayak pedals. This one here is 2 meter 10, 210 centimeter, and can be adjusted to 220 centimeter. So 82.6 inches to 86.6 inches. Another characteristic is what we can see here, the plates are long and narrow. Whitewater pedals are shorter and wider. They are also more stiff. These ones here are not so stiff. So they are, they are robust enough. These nylon fiberglass plates are robust enough against abrasion and breaking, but they are rather for a quieter pedaling style than a pedaling style where you use maximum power. In your strokes. It has a carbon shaft which makes it very comfortable to hold also over several hours of pedaling and it prevents blistering. Another characteristic is we can break it down into four pieces that makes it very useful for backpacking trips because they are easily fitting in your backpack. That's how small it is. Four pieces. They are also two piece pedals existing they are cheaper but of course they will stick out of your backpack and you have one piece pedals they are robust very stiff but of course very inconvenient to carry so that's another thing what you have to consider white water pedals are shorter around 196 centimeter to 205 centimeter so 77 inches to 81 inches as I mentioned the plates are more stiff and because they are shorter, you can have your high angle power strokes. So when you go down a river and you have waves, you are more coming from a high angle compared to on a lake where you have a low angle stroke. The brand here is called Amphibio and the model is called Wave. So it's a touring pedal, sea kayak pedal. Another benefit is I can adjust the feather angle. The feather angle is the angle of rotation between the two plates. I can make the angle to 30 degrees, which I use for rivers and perhaps up to 45 degrees for lakes. And especially if I'm pedaling against the wind, so headwind. What is the benefit? The benefit is due to this angle, the upper pedal is slicing with less resistance through the air. So if you are six hours, eight hours pedaling, these little things matter. So that's another benefit with this pedal that I can adjust the feather angle as I want to have it. It is quite light. It's below one kilo, 
970 gram, so below 2.1 pounds. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it, but because I do now more and more whitewater rafting, I will buy a second puddle. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for joining this video. I hope you could learn something. If you have any questions, leave a comment and hope to see you in my next video. Bye.